Good morning, church. Let's go ahead and make our way to our seats. We're about to worship here shortly. And we're going to have a quick scripture reading and prayer right before we begin. Good morning, you beautiful people. On this day before Valentine's Day, formerly known as the Super Bowl Sunday, for those of us. <laughs> we're going to uh, get started here praising our great God here shortly, but we wanted to, to begin with a great, one of the great psalms in the Bible. Of course, all of the psalms are great, aren't they? Amen. But this is uh, Psalm 121, and this is a great psalm to hold on to and to remember when you're thinking about battles that you're facing and the fact that God protects us. Amen. But this is what it says. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He who watches over your life, uh, the Lord will watch over you and your coming and your going both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, say a prayer with that. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your great love for us and the fact that you watch over us in all of our going out and coming in. You are so in tune with our being, Father, our hearts, and we thank you so much. You're, you're a great God and master, and we want to serve you and love you with all of our heart. Thank you so much for your great love for us. Bless this day tremendously. Help everything to be a, a, a fragrant aroma to you as we worship and praise you. And we praise you and, and pray all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Don't you want to go to that land? Where I'm bound, oh yeah. Nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but love in that land, nothing but love in that land. Nothing but love in that land where I'm bound, oh yeah. Nothing but peace in that land, nothing but peace in that land. Nothing but peace in that land where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Nothing but peace in that land, nothing but peace in that land, nothing but peace in that land where I'm bound. Oh yeah, I've got a savior in that land. Come on, church. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land where I'm bound. Oh oh, I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land. I've got a savior in that land where I'm bound. Oh yeah, sign me up, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Won't you write my name on the road? Cause I've been changed. Us the Lord has lifted me, and I wanna be, wanna be ready. Ready when Jesus comes, oh yeah, sign me up, sign me up, for the Christian Jubilee. Now won't you write my name, write my name upon the road, cause I've been changed, I've been changed since the Lord has slipped me, and I want to be, want to be ready, ready when, one more time, we're going to do that again, sign me up, sign me up, sign me up. For the Christian Jubilee. Now won't you write my name? Write my name 
on the road. Cause I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. And I want to be, want to be ready, ready when Jesus comes. Oh, yeah. We've got some special effects going on this morning, and our great brother Tali is handling it. Amen. Still working on the special effects, guys. <laughs> it's, uh... Amen. You guys got all of your Valentine's Day gifts ready for tomorrow? <laughs> got one more day. A little bit less than one more day. Man. All right, Vince. We're going to sing Power in the Blood. Here we go. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood of the Lamb. There is power. There is power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be wider, much wider than snow? There is power in the blood, power in the blood. Since stains are lost in this life-giving flow, there is wonderful power in the blood. There is power, wonder-working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power. There is power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. 
Would you live daily? His praises to sing. There is wonderful power in the blood. There is power. There is power. Wonder working power in the blood. In the blood. Of the Lamb. Of the Lamb. There is power. There is power. Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Sing that again. There is power. There is power. There is power. In the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb. There, is power. there is power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. All right, the splendor of a king. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice And trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see how great how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and time is in his hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God at three in one, Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. How great is our God! Sing with me, how great! our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Sing that again. How great is our God? How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? And all will see how great, how great is our God. You are the name above all names. You are the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Name above all names. He's a name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how 
great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great. How great is our God. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, church. Uh, for those that don't know, my name is Van Flowers. Uh, I've been attending this church for nine years now. So, uh, and I'm here today to give the communion speech. Uh, Monday, I went to my annual doctor's appointment. I uh, went to a new doctor's office. Uh, so I have to give them my family history. Uh, and in my family, uh, diabetes runs heavy. Um, after telling a doctor that, she wanted to do blood work just to make sure everything is okay. Uh, Wednesday, I got the results and I found out that I'm pre-diabetic. Uh, after hearing the news, I began to panic and it's like, oh man, <laughs> diabetes is like right around the corner and it's like, man, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, the fear set in and I started to defeat myself. Uh, and once the emotions set aside, uh, a scripture that came to mind, uh, if you all can turn there, it will be Luke twenty-two forty-two. 42. Um, during this time, it's, uh, Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's praying. Uh, and in one of his prayers, he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Um, during this time, uh, like before we got to this point, I like to think God and Jesus was having a meeting and it was like, all right, we have a 33 year plan to save the world. At the end of it, you're going to die. But so many lives can be saved. Uh, and during this prayer, it got real for God or well, Jesus. And he was like, man, I'm really about to die right now. <laughs> so like the fear set in and the reality of his life is over. Um, um, but despite his fear, he went on with the plan because he knew God, but he went on with the plan because with this plan, it gives, it, it gives everyone a chance to get to know God. Um, so regardless of what happens to me, if I get diabetes or I'm able to reverse everything, I know God is good and I will continue to imitate Jesus and ch continue to choose God despite my fears. Uh, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time for us to come before you in prayer. Um, God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us. Uh, and thank you for Jesus for carrying out your plan despite of how you're feeling. Uh, he knew the end goal was to bring more people to you, and this was the only way that was possible. Uh, I love you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen.
Appreciate that, Van. Appreciate personal sharing like that. A lot of diabetes in my family as well. Been there, felt that. Had that doctor visit several years ago, and uh, I left the doctor's office. Actually, what <laughs> exact thing that happened? Uh, he said, "Well, the number one cause of type two diabetes is obesity." I said, "Who you call it that?" <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> being honest with you. <laughs> so I, uh, I left his office and went and signed up at the RecPlex and joined and started my series of triathlons and things like that. So, hey, you know, it seems to have worked. I'm still, you know, okay. This is, this is pandemic weight here. <laughs> Psalm 66. Shout with joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise his glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Come and see what God has done. How awesome his works in man's behalf. He turned the sea into dry land. It passed through the waters on foot. Come, let us rejoice in him. He rules forever by his power. His eyes watch the nations. Let not the rebellious rise up against him. Praise our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, O God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water but you brought us to a place of abundance. I will come to your temple with burnt offerings and fulfill my vows to you, vows my lips promised and my mouth spoke when I was in trouble. I will sacrifice fan animals to you and offering of rams. I will offer bulls and goats. I read this because the natural response here and in life to, to gratitude, to, to realizing what you've been blessed with is to want to give, right? I mean, when we're here to give, it should be out of gratitude. We're giving just, it's a natural response. I mean, he goes from all these things God's done, even the hard things, but he brought us out, therefore I'm going to give to you, all right? So we have a rich life. I wake up some mornings and I just think, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this house. I don't deserve these people. My grandkids come over, and I'm like, I don't deserve these grandkids. I look at my wife, I'm like, holy cow. I, I, I am overwhelmed. So I give, right? That's what we're here for now, is to give. Thank you, Father, so much that you are generous beyond measure, that we have so much more than we need or deserve. And God, you are generous on all fronts. Our cup overflows on all sides. We pray for your help as we give now, that our hearts be cheerful and joyful, and that we give appropriately a sacrifice that pleases you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you have a physical contribution, there's a box over here next to the door, a black box. Put the contribution in there. Or you can go online at um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> gateway.com give or something like that. All right? <laughs> Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. I have some very exciting announcements. Even more exciting than the Super Bowl. Go Bingos! Yeah! <laughs> I'm from Ohio, so hopefully I didn't make anyone struggle by saying that. But there are more exciting things going on in God's church. So uh, we are bringing back the men's breakfast. And uh, the first one this year is February 19th at 9 a.m. here at the church building. So please come. Uh, we are also gearing up for the Heartland Prom. Go teens. Woo woo. That's going to be April 23rd at 6.30 p.m. It's only $70 for a whole lot of fun. whole lot of fun. So please register. Um, also... Uh, our very own Tim and Crystal Schmidt are hosting a Heartland Church Marriage Retreat. It's called Becoming One, and it will be March 11th through the 13th, 
And if you would like to go and you need more details, Jeff Schmidt, could you please stand up? Please see Jeff Schmidt. He will give you more details about that. Um, also, I am super fired up about the World Discipleship Summit in Orlando, Florida. If I remember correctly, we already have 13,000 disciples signed up for this summit. It's going to be absolutely amazing. The dates are July 31st through August 7th. You can go to the WorldDisciplesSummit.com and get all the information about the summit. But I want to encourage everyone, if you can go, please do. It's going to be an incredible time. And then I am super excited about this last announcement. So um, Women's International Day is March 8th, and um, that's a Tuesday. And Women's International, I call it month. So Women's International Month is really a time to celebrate being a woman in Christ and to honor him with our hearts and with our actions. So this year, our theme is Knitted Together or United in Love, taken from Colossians 2, verses 2 through 3. And we're going to honor God this year by having a Heartland Day of prayer and fasting with our sister churches in the Heartland. And then locally, I'm super excited about this, we are going to make blankets of love, okay? And we have, um, we have a couple places that we're making blankets for. Is the Annie Malone Children's Home. Maybe some of you guys have heard of these places, but they have kids who need blankets. Uh, we're going to make blankets for the Belleville Crisis Intervention Center, Friends of Kids with Cancer, and the Ronald McDonald House in South County Center. So that's, you know... That's a lot of places. So, sisters, we're going to need all your little hands to knit together some awesome blankets. Our goal is to make at least 100 blankets. And um, we're going to celebrate. We're going to end our time of Women's International Month with a Women's Mint Week in March. So next week we will give out more details. But I'm super, super excited that we can um, honor God and spread God's love to, to children in our community. And last but not least, we have a great couple, James and Kathy Hatcher, who have moved here, and they would like to introduce themselves to the church. Good morning, church. How are everybody today? Today, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, we're the Hatcher family. Uh, this is my beautiful wife, Kathy. I'll let her uh, introduce herself, and then I'll follow on with uh, little details about us and how we got here. So, okay. Uh, my name is Kathy. I was met in the Tulsa Church uh, about 15 years ago, where today I have been a disciple for 15 years. As you can tell, she don't like to speak in public a lot, so. She leave the rest to me. So uh, again, like I said, my name is James. Uh, I've been a disciple for three years. Uh, myself and Kathy has been married for three years, although I've known her for 30 years. So, uh, so when we d agreed to get married, I decided to uh, join the fellowship uh, with, this, with this body of Christ. And so I, I studied the Bible for three weeks, and then I got baptized in 2019. So um, we just celebrated our three-year anniversary in February the 9th. So we're, we're celebrating, off of celebrating this week. Um, we have a, com a beautiful combined family of six kids, uh, four boys and two girls. Uh, we're empty nesters, so we enjoy uh, traveling, and, and also we have six beautiful grandkids. So we enjoy traveling and spending time with them. Um, that's what we love to do. Um, we move here from Virginia um, because I relocated for a job. I'm retired military, so I decided to move out here to Scott Air Force Base and uh, take a job there. Um, <laughs> to be centrally located, to visit our grandkids as well as our other family members uh, back in Alabama. Um, that being said, we're happy to be here. We love you all. Thank, thanks to the, uh, the S Southern Illinois uh, Bible Talk group that's welcomed us in. We love you guys. Appreciate all the love and, and uh, welcome that you showed us. So God bless, and we're happy to be here.
Amen, church. We are so happy to have James and Kathy Hatcher with us from Virginia. And we understand that Kathy is a part singer, so we will hopefully work you in, Kathy, even though you might get a little nervous, as your husband said, and get in front of the group. We hear you can sing. So we're going to employ you here, hopefully in the near future. Church, we're going to uh, come together. We're going to stand and we're going to praise our great God and encourage uh, one another and our great God as we get ready for our brother Bill to preach the word to us this morning. Amen. Where's that brother? There he is. And we're going to sing, uh, He Gave Her Water. A great story about that encounter that happened with that, with our great Messiah Jesus and that woman at the well and how she was given that living, lasting water. Amen? All right. I got to get one of these old-time pitch pipe things out. I'm almost embarrassed to take it out of my pocket here. We got all, all these modern brothers and sisters up here. We're going to go a little old school. Well, Jesus, he gave her water. He gave her water. Oh, my Jesus, he gave her water. He gave her water. Oh, Jesus, he gave her water. And it was not from the way. Well, Jesus, he gave her water. You know, my Jesus, he gave her water. Come on, Jesus, he gave her water. He gave her water. And it was not from the way. Well, there was a woman he gave her water. Samaria. He gave she came to the way to get her water. some water. He gave her water. But there he gave she her met water. a stranger. He gave her water. And he did her, he gave her water. story tale. He gave her water. She left he my Savior water. singing. He gave her water. And she came he back to him bringing he gave her water. all the time. She had water. He gave her water. And it was not. From the way with the hills, he gave her water. You know, my Jesus gave her water. Oh, Jesus gave her water. He gave her water. And it was not from the way with the hills, he gave her water. You know, my Jesus gave her water. He gave her water. And it was not from the way with the hills, he gave her water. Oh, Jesus gave her water. He gave her water. And it was not from the way. Well, on that woman, he had pity. He gave her water. She ran. He gave her water. She gave her water. Frank Glove. He gave her water. Hallelujah. He gave her water. I'm going to let his praises swell. He gave her water. Every time she doubted. He gave her water. Stop he to think water. about he him of oh, the man he who gave, gave her water, water. He gave her water. and it was he not from the way. Oh, he gave, he gave water. her water. He gave her water. Jesus he gave her water. Gave her water. He gave her water. Oh, Jesus he gave her water. He gave her water. He gave you know water. I'm gonna let his praise sway. He gave her water. Jesus gave her water. that a woman. He gave her water. Oh, he gave her that living lasting. He gave her water. He gave her water, he gave her water, and it was not from the way. He gave her water, 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 you know I'm gonna let his praise swell. He gave her water, 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 and it was not. From the way. Amen, church. Please be seated. <laughs> That's good. That boy, good. He can sing. Oh, my goodness. Woo! I'm going to be thinking about that. All week. <laughs> Every shower, I'm going to be like, can I pull it off? Can I pull it off? And my wife will be going, please, please do not. Please do not pull it off. That was awesome. And, uh, and man, I got I to gotta say thank you to everyone that was talking about their pre-diabetes. Uh, I just want to say that you're not committed enough. I've been diabetic since I was 17. So, uh, yeah, when you're ready to step up to the adult leagues, you know, come on up. Uh, actually, if you could avoid it, I recommend it highly. Uh, but, uh, guys, I am so excited to uh, be preaching today, uh, excited to be with you. Uh, you know, we're, uh, next week, we're actually, Lawrence did not get the message about the marriage conference in March. They're actually having one next weekend, and Kristen and I are doing that one. And then at the end of the month, uh, there is the uh, International Teachers Conference, of which they decided I should probably go. Uh, and so I'm going to be there ne the, the following weekend. So, man, I'm going to be missing you guys 
And so I am so grateful to be able to have this time with you. And even the, the, the topic of wrestling with this idea of vision. I just think it's just, you know how God is. You kind of, you, you kind of submit to yourself like, Hey God, we have, we are, we are great planners, but you have shown us that sometimes it's just better to be before you and allow you to guide us. That's where January came from, the simple stripped down version of church where we're going to focus on prayer. And it just seemed like every week, you know, our souls just got in, expanded and enlarged. And it was, it was awesome. I, I, I kind of felt it even in the, the quiet times uh, on Thursday morning. There was just this sense of surrender that comes with, man, we really do need to seek the Lord with all of our hearts. And it, it, it felt good. And you kind of go, okay, well, what do you do after a month like that? And, you know, Vince really just kind of just said, man, I think we've got to start putting forth vision. Not necessarily the, you know, vision, stick a flag in the ground, say, this is where we're going. But, but a vision that goes, what if, what if we really kind of expected God to fill in things? You know, because vision, you know, is, is we kind of think of vision as the end result. This is the product of prayer. This is the product of this. And now I know where we're going. But vision in and of itself is a part of how you see everything. And how you see everything will tell you how you will respond to everything. So last week we focused on having a great vision of God. Incredibly important. In fact, that may be the most important lesson this whole this whole series long, we have to keep going back to a lot of our struggles, go back to how we see God. And of course, one of the big struggles in really seeing God is when we think back on our past. You know, as individuals, we can't help it. We're American. We, we, we're, we're, very, we're very egocentric. We, we think about life in terms of us. We're the star of our movie. You know what I'm talking about? You know, uh, we are we are the, the headliner of this concert. Uh, you know, we're not the opening act. I mean, this is all this is what it is, man. This is it's my world. Y'all just living in it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that that's kind of how we think about it. But man, when the reality of wait, there are some things that have come up in my life that are hard for me to rationalize. If God is. This incredible vision of what we were given last week, he is mighty, he is awesome, he is sovereign, then he's got some explaining to do. You know what I'm saying? And so there comes this tension with, well, what do I do with my past? How do I meld those two together? And for a lot of us, we just learn to survive and move on cope and move on let's not bring it up let's let's not deal let's just assume you know that that uh yeah it happened let's just kind of go on but if you're gonna have vision that comes from god you have to have some moments of clarity and honesty with god and those always kind of have to go back to the past now Boy, I've really set myself up. I mean, how do you teach through something like that? I mean, do you just kind of go and start telling the meta narrative of the Bible and kind of trace this, this redeeming quality of God to take a bunch of just yahoos and turn them into a nation that would ultimately give us Jesus, who that very nation that was created out of God's grace would end up killing God himself and then God overcoming that with a resurrection so that everyone, everyone, because everyone's like that, can now have a shot at salvation? Should you tell that story? That'd be a great story. But that's not what I'm going to do today. I should have just said, amen, let's go Super Bowl. Uh, no, but what I... As I kind of was wrestling with this, I go, you know what we need? We need someone we can identify with. We need one person in history that can kind of stand in our place, that has our nature, that has, that has the same sort of issues that we have, and turned out okay. Not because he came out squeaky clean and got away with something. Oh, no, he didn't. But because he came out and kind of serves as this incredible kind of symbol, kind of guide, kind of 
God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This is how God tends to work with people. And of course, I'm talking about Jacob. You know, uh, uh, many years ago, uh, the Chicago Church of Christ identified that there was a large part of our demographic in our membership that had been a disciple for 25 years or more. And they started going, you know, we need to make sure that we take care of those that have been doing this for a long time because, man, you get weary. Can I get a witness? <laughs> no? Oh, okay. There, there's two honest ones among us. Every, 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 yeah. Everyone's going, go back to your opening, opening statement there, Bill. Yeah, and, and so they, they're kind of, they're, they're seem to be kind of like, hey, we need to do something for them. And of course, you know, in that moment of inspiration, I was thinking, man, I, I, need, to, I need to write some devotionals. And, and so I put this one together called Walking with a Limp. Because Jacob, to me, just seemed to be, oh, he is, he, well, he's me. He's He's you. His story is our story. And of course, even Paul would say, yeah, Jacob eventually becomes Israel, and we are spiritual Israel. There's a connection there. But man, I was not prepared. What started off as being this cute little put on the website kind of devotional, as I started digging, I started getting uncovered. Core issues in my own life. And it, and it changed me radically. In fact, some of this is going to sound familiar because I squeak it in all the time when I talk. But this is my, I, I kind of felt like, man, this is my chance to kind of unpack some of the things that God has shown me so that you can kind of see that, hey, our, if we, we cannot move forward, we cannot get vision, we cannot become who God has called us to be if we don't come face to face with our past. Are you with me here? Okay, amen. Amen. Well, this is how this whole party got started. Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Fame of Faith. If you ever, if you ever kind of go, oh, I just need to be inspired by the Bible. Hebrews 11. You got to go there. These are real people who had real disappointment and had to overcome real obstacles. And they make this Hall of Fame of Faith, not because they were awesome and epic, although a few of them were, but because they were like us dealing with, with, with such circumstances very similar to ours. And, and I love this because this is how Jacob is introduced to us in this, uh, in this chapter, it says, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to the future. By faith Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on top of his staff. And I was like, of all the things in Jacob's life, when the author of Hebrews looked back at how do I tell this story? How do I help the people of faith in the first century come to terms with where they're at in life? He goes, this is the detail I want to highlight. At the end of it all, he blessed Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned upon his staff. He was going to be one who would be wounded. He was going to be one that that wound would carry with him for the rest of his life, even to the very end. He still bears the effects of walking with God in a way that forced him to lean on top of a staff, but he worshiped while leaning on on his staff. This is not a posture of bitterness. This is not a posture of being defeated. This is not a posture of saying, man, I could have had it, but God did me dirty. This is someone that had to wrestle with the reality of his choices, wrestle with the reality of a true God, wrestle with the reality that our decisions have consequences, and those consequences sometimes bear scars, but the glory rests in the fact that even scarred up, even failed, even flawed, I'm going to worship resting atop of my staff come on wow. i was like that's 
That's something I can relate to. I'm not going to be swooped up to glory like Elijah. I'm not going to be spared all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to ascend to heaven like Jesus. I'm going to have a moment where I got nothing left. I'm going to need support. I'm going to need scaffolding and machinery. And I want to be leaning on top of that stuff, worshiping. And you do too. Of course, I wouldn't mind an Enoch experience. But that's not going to happen. And it's not the way it was meant to be for Jacob either. As you can tell from the, the story, Jacob was the, was the son of Isaac. You know, amen, children's ministry, come on. They, they know how to be honest in children's ministry. You know, you might be looking at that going, what's going on? Well, you got to read your Bible because it is hilarious. You know, uh, Isaac is, is a, one of those characters, the, the father of Jacob, that you just kind of go, I'm not sure how to read Isaac, really. Because he's either super faithful or he is just super simple. Isaac's a character in the Bible that seems to never have an opinion. You know, he, he is the child of promise given to Abraham late in life. I mean, we did our, uh, Matthew, our Genesis 15 lesson, God is the great reward. Well, the reward was Isaac. You know, part of the benefit of walking with God, God came through on his pro- promise. But Isaac just seems to kind of go with the flow. There's a time God asked Abraham for Isaac back. I want you to go sacrifice him. And uh, the story says that as they were on their way, Isaac noticed the fire in the wood, but the sacrifice was missing. Father, why is there no, no sa- uh, animal for the sacrifice? Abraham said, the Lord will provide. Isaac said, okay. <laughs> Isaac's having a Jeff Hughes moment, looking out on the horizon, wondering if he'll ever get a wife. I'm sorry, did I not speak truth? That's what I thought. He's looking out, and then all of a sudden, his father's servant comes. And with him is a little honey that he found by a well. You know, the, the servant comes up and says, here is, here is your wife. Isaac's like, where'd you find her? She watered my camels. Isaac says, okay. (laughs) Later in life, it doesn't change. You know, he digs a well. Some some competitive forces come in and steal the well. And they're like, hey, Isaac, they, they stole our well. Should we go fight them? No, we'll just dig another one. Okay. Man, and he's either really just kind of a simple dude Or maybe being simple is the way to be faithful. He had two boys, Jacob and Esau. They were twins, but they didn't come out at the same time. Thank the Lord. Esau was first. He was the firstborn. He was the one by design that was meant to receive the blessing and the birthright. He got the birthright. Therefore, he was meant to be the the one that would bear the blessing. It was supposed to be the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Esau. Uh, And when Esau came out, he was named Esau because he was hairy, red. You know, either way, the names are really important because they always have dual dual meanings. He was a red, hairy critter. (laughs) Jacob comes out, and he's a smooth-skinned brother. (laughs) Genetics were much kinder to Jacob. He was awesome. You know, uh, we, we, will li- we will learn in the story later that Jacob is going to steal the birthright by dressing up like his brother, by covering himself with wool skin, with the wool on it. And it fools his blind dad. How hairy. How hairy do you have to be where someone could lay wool over their arm and you go, my son! Here is our biblical context of a Wookiee. 
can you see them at the high school dance? Can, can you see it? Jacob having to go up to the young ladies, go, hey, girls, how's it going? Hey, you want to dance with my brother and me? Which one's my brother? Oh, he's the, uh, well, he, he's the Wookiee. <laughs> it must have been, I mean, it's hilarious. But, but here's, here's one thing that we know. Jacob was named Jacob because he came out grasping the heel of his older brother. Jacob means heel grasper. It also means deceiver. And it's funny how something that is a liability could also be a strength. That grasping of the heel, that sense of not letting go, that sense of I'm going to hang on for all that I'm worth, and yet at the same time it has that liability, and I'm willing to compromise my standards and yours to get what I want. It's a name that we share. That's how we are. You have gotten to the place in life, a lot of us, not by the grace of God. You've gotten there because there's a part of us that naturally believes the way of Jacob is the right way. I'm going to grab on. I'm going to get mine. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get ahead. And if I need to compromise my standards a little bit or yours, I'm willing to live with that. We are all deceitful to a certain degree. The only way we know to stop is when our conscience finally goes, uh, uh, uh. But it's there. We don't want it to be, but if you pretend that it's not, you're lying. It's there. He was there. And it's amazing how God goes, he's the one I want to work with. I talk about how Jacob steals Esau's birthright, but there's a part of the story that I want to focus on. It says he went to us, this is Genesis 27, verses 18 through 21. It says, he went to his father and said, my father, yes, son, he answered. Who is it? Who is it? I need you to hang on to that question. That who question. You know, a lot of times in Bible study, we always kind of turn the lens on the who of the, of the text. But I think there's some moments where the who is supposed to be aimed at us. Who is it? Who are you? Who do you claim to be? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of the game so that you, you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, how did you find it so quickly, my son? The, the Lord your God gave me success. Actually, we know what happened. Esau, Isaac's dying. Esau's a man of the earth. He is the hunter. Uh, Jacob is the cook. Uh, Esau goes off to get game. And while he's off, mom and, es uh, mom and Jacob whip together some sort of gamey meal. And he acts like he went out and he's Esau and he goes in. And, and of course, the Lord your God gave me success. You ever done that before? Where you credit God for something that you manipulated and grabbed? I'm the only one, really? The Lord your God gave me success. Then Isaac said to Jacob, come near that I can touch you, my son, to know whether you are really Esau or not. It's funny how Isaac, blind, still had his doubts. This is really going to come to you telling me the truth or not. Jacob went close to his father who touched him and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, poor Esau. So he proceeded to bless him. Are you really my son Esau? He asked, I am. For those that read their Bible, you recognize that statement. God would be asked, what's your name? Who are you? God would respond, I am. It's a great response. But man, there is a difference between the way God says it and the way that we tend to use it. 
Jacob is being cornered. You have to own what you're really saying about yourself. You have to own it. No one else can step in and say, well, I'm doing this because uh, this happened to me and that happened to me. No, you have to say, hey, listen, there are things that are going to happen. There are, there's stuff that's going to come into your life, but those things cannot answer this question for you. Who are you? Are you really what you claim to be? Jacob in this moment says, I am. Steals the birthright. Which then means he is going to receive the blessing. Esau does, is not off the hook. You've got to read the story. I'm not going to talk about him today. But Jacob was a low-down, dirty sneak. He's a hard guy to really like in the Bible. You know, in fact, I would dare say that if you read your Bible and aren't bugged a little bit, you're probably not reading it correctly. Because he should not be getting the birthright. He should not be, it should not be the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, but it is. In fact, even after the truth comes out and, and Isaac realizes he's been fooled and Esau comes back with real game and realizes that his little brother done, done did him dirty, you know, he says, I'm going to kill that fool. Jacob's on the run. Yeah, and you would think this is where God would, good, was going to come in and just lay the smack on him. Yeah, that's what you get, Jacob, for being a deceiver. You have the opportunity just to be stalwart and, and, and intense and hanging on to every word. But you took matters into your own hands. You're a deceiver, Jacob. You think God would have every right to do that. But that's not what happens in Genesis 28. God shows up and gives Jacob a vision. This would be a great lesson for next week's sermon. You know, where he's given a vision of the present, angels ascending and descending at the very place where Jacob was laying his head. And, and Jacob says something amazing, says, surely the Lord is here. And I did not realize it. But what God says to Jacob is even more astounding. He says, wherever you go, I will be with you. I, I stole the birthright. I manipulated my way into this blessing. And God goes, I know. I am with you. I'll go with you wherever you go. You would think the change in Jacob would start at that moment. It does not. But neither did it with us either, right? You know, the story goes on. Jacob, through a lot of other manipulation and a little sleight of hand, and a little bit of blessing of God, God was not lying. God gave Jacob success when he didn't deserve it. Jacob comes to this place where he's burned all of his bridges. He has nowhere to go except back home where his brother was. And he's at the fords of the, of the Jacob. He's at the, he's at the river crossing that would lead him right back to where this is where my brother lives. And we pick up this story here in Genesis 32, beginning in verse 22. It says that night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the fords of the Jebek. After he sent them across the stream, he sent over all of his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Now you will have people that will kind of beat up on Jacob about sending his wife over first as though he is hiding behind that. You have to remember if you're going to resolve a conflict, how generous should you be? When you've stolen everything from someone that you were supposed to love, you know, people say, well, Jacob, look at him. He's being twisty. He's kind of he's sending him off, and he sends him off in two groups, right? He sends one this way, one's that way. It's like, so that way, if one gets attacked, the other will be okay. And I say, well, maybe, or maybe, when you've come to grips with the fact that I'm here where I am because of my own decisions, maybe the right move is to always go, 
I am going to claim nothing as my own anymore. No matter where my brother comes from, I want him to see what I'm offering. Just saying. The point of the story, though, is that he's left alone where I think we need to spend more time. I think the possessions going across first finally gave him a moment to really wrestle with the question. Who are you? What have I done to get here? What will I do going forward? Who am I really? And in this moment, it says a man wrestled with him till daybreak. You know, I've heard of pickup basketball games. This is not your normal interaction with two guys. It just says all of a sudden there was a wrestling match. And I think that's, that's important because isn't that what it's like to be still before God? When you take away all your little commentaries and digital devices and you take away all the things that you used to use to distract yourself, you turn off the music, you turn everything and you're just there with God and you're left with those nagging questions of your soul. God, who am I to you? What am I? Do, how, do you love me as I am right now? Am I worth, I mean, after all that I've done, after all that I haven't done, am I still valuable to you? Do I still matter? Do I still, do my prayers even reach you anymore? Do, do, do do I even count for anything in your horizon? God, I need to know. See, those things happen when you turn everything off and it's just you and God and now something can come up and you can start wrestling. Yeah. Come on, brother. But we're not talking a metaphoric wrestling match here. Yeah. It gets serious. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, oh, okay, Woo. he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, blap, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, the hill grasper replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. Oh, I love this. This is great physical theater. Can you see? Can you see how this would be out in a film? You have these two equally awesome guys just going for it. They're wrestling. They're struggling. And then all of a sudden, someone goes, oh, well, it's daybreak. It's time to go. I got to get out. I'm not letting you go unless you bless me. And then he goes, okay, blam. <laughs> and now the wrestler becomes the clinger. He's injured. He can't overcome anymore. He's struggling. The hip's gone. The, 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 whole, the whole base of your power is gone. He's robbed of it. He has no way to, to manipulate this guy anymore. He is at this guy's mercy. So he goes from grappling to clinging. Do you see? Do you see the theater? I can't let you go. I'm defenseless like this. I'm helpless unless I hang on to you. I have to cling you. You have to bless me. Watch this. The man asked him, what is your name? Now we're talking. Let's, let's, let's get down to the real reason why I spent this whole night wrestling with you. Who are you? Can you tell me? Can you be honest with yourself right now? Listen to the response. Oh. Jacob, he answered. It's such a short line but it is just rich with intention and honesty. He's owning every part of who he is. He finally comes clean. 
He finally comes to grip with what the, his story has always been about. He is now in this moment of clinging to this man he had been wrestling with. He is now just kind of going, as I look back on my life, I, I have lived up to everything that, that I thought could be said about me. I am Jacob. I am a deceiver. I am a grasper. I am a survivor. And I will do anything. I will cut anyone. I will, I will take any shortcut it takes. That's who I am. That's what you're doing dealing with here. This is why I can't let you go. I can't go into a world limping and wounded because they're going to destroy me. That's what I deserve. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. Because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. You are no longer Jacob but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. And you know the great thing about the name of Israel? It's also one of those two-parters. It, it does mean to struggle with God and humans and prevail. It also means God prevails. And the only way you can know the difference on which way you should take that those, op, those uh, translations, is the context. Right now, Jacob becoming Israel was still in this phase of, oh yeah, you're struggling with God now. It's not just you and humans. You're struggling with God and with humans. You're going to be okay. But later we're going to see this incredible name alteration. From this point forward, every time Jacob acts like Jacob, According to his flesh, according to his will, the Bible calls him Jacob. And every time he acts in alignment with God's will, it calls him Israel. Isn't that awesome? In this moment, he goes, God, I mean, God through this man, probably Jesus, God through this man is wrestling with him and dealing with the core issue. I need to know who you think you are. What's your name? The last time you were asked that, you told a big old lie. What will you say now? I'm Jacob. Yeah, see, that's not how I see you. That's not the vision I have for you. You're more an Israel. From now on, you're going to struggle with a purpose. From now on, you're going to wrestle with intention. And at the end of the day, you're going to learn that no matter what you choose, I'm going to lead you back to the statement that I will prevail. I am going to prevail in your life. Won't you give me a chance? I want to give you a new name. Your name is Israel. Jacob wrestles with God, not because he was prideful, not because he was, he was antagonistic. He had a deep conflict with him and his past. How do you outrun your sin? You can't. How do you get past the, the, the wounds in your own life? You can't. Can you sidestep the problems? No, you can't. There will always be a Red Sea that God's going to have to part and take us through. There is always going to be a moment where you're going to go, we can't just cross the Jacob. You're going to have to wrestle with this one for a while. This is our story, but the results of it are the same. You will get a new name. And sometimes you need to be brought back to this new identity time and time again. Well, Bill, what's my new name? What's my new title? Oh, it's a good one. Let me tell you, you don't have to wait for revel revelation to get that little stone thing that are going to hand out. Everyone. And then they gave them a new stone and it had a name on them that was known only to them. Ooh. <laughs> you don't have to wait. You ready for the new title? Try this one. Bill Molden. Son of God. Jill Garcia. Daughter of God. You know what's great about that title? Is that it also has two implications to it. You could be a son and a daughter and feel entitled. 
Like, whoo, I made it. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do anymore. And then you go right back into the wrestling ring. God's going to meet you on the Fords. He's going to meet you there. He will take you there. He will always take you back there but until it gets worked out with you and your past. Or you can accept it as it was meant to be. I know what you've done. I know who you are. And you're still mine. Honor the name. Honor the gift. Give yourself completely to God's vision of who you are. Forget this personal vision garbage. Let's just live into the vision God has. The moment you stepped into that water and you said, God will prevail. Or New Testament, Jesus is Lord. You came up and God goes, now we're talking. Son, daughter, new name. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped him as he leaned on top of his staff. If you have to have a vision for yourself, let it be that word. You've been given a name you couldn't possibly deserve, but you essentially need for everything. How do we honor this title? Bless. Use whatever you have to bless. But I have a lot of wounds. You know, the amazing thing is, is that every black eye of my soul is always being used to help someone else get to that place. Everything that I'm most embarrassed about is the very thing when I sit down across from someone at a, at a uh, coffee table, I go, let me tell you my story. It's a lot like Jacob's. I was a manipulator and user. I abused friendships so that I could get what I wanted. I didn't even know what I was searching for, but I wanted to make sure I got it before anyone else. And then God said, you, yeah, you, come follow me. And it's amazing that the things that cause us to lean on top of our staff are the very things that God wants to use to bless others. So the question comes, will you worship him? Will you worship him? That's a vision of our past. There we go. That was, that was awesome, Bill. I don't know if you were literally thinking of me as you did this, but from the like first slide all the way through, I was like, this is perfect for me specifically. You know, uh, I think about, you know, I was a wrestler growing up. I, I coach wrestling now. I've dislocated my hip wrestling. Like that, I, I, I get Jacob. You know, I, I also, you know, I'm a very deceitful person. I, I probably should have been named Jacob. I don't know. But uh, this week, I also, don't tell my wife, even though she's right there, I, I tore my ACL this weekend, and I can't really walk upstairs very well, and so I'm walking with a limp. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, to me, uh, it's, it's so powerful, what really was powerful for me is, that, you know, that I, that I have a new name. Yes. You know, that, that I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm a child of God. And as I think about all the things in life that I built myself up to, I think God tore it down so he can give me something that matters. You know, that all the things that I worked for, just like all the things that Jacob worked for, led to a point where I have to go, you know what? This is worthless. I need God to give me a new name. 
that God wants to bless you. He wants to build you up. He wants to give you a new name. So, as, so this week, as we go, I want us to think about that. What, how has God blessed you? How has God given you the strength and God given you a new name? And let's move forward in that way. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have one more song. God, we really are nothing without you. You know, we, we try so hard to, to grasp at things, to, to take control, to, to show ourselves as powerful and meaningful and, and worth something on our own. And the truth is, we, we just aren't. And we desperately need you to bless us. We desperately need your strength and your power. And we need you to, to give us the thing that gives us worth. God, we are grateful that you desire to do that. And uh, we just want to be able to live lives worthy of the incredible blessings you give us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. We're going to sing one last song. One of those days. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to sing Wade in the Water. Wade in the water. Wade in the water, children. Wade. In the water, oh, God's gonna trouble the water. Sing that again. We're singing, wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water, oh, God's gonna trouble the water. Now, see those people all dressed in red. God's gonna trouble. They look like the people that Moses lived. God's gonna trouble the water. Now see those people are dressed in gold. God's gonna trouble the water. They look like disciples of Christ, I'm told. God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, we're singing, wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, wait in the water. Whoa, God's gonna trouble the water. Now I looked over yonder and what do I see? God's gonna trouble the water. I saw God's angels all coming for me. But God's gonna trouble the now, if you don't believe that I've been redeemed, God's gonna trouble the water. Then follow me down to Jordan Stream. God's gonna trouble the water. We're singing, wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, wait. In the water, whoa, God's gonna trouble the water. Like me, Shrek, Shadrach, and Abednego. God's gonna trouble the water. Through faith into the fiery furnace I go. God's gonna trouble the water. Like David, so Goliath with just one shot. Come on, brother. God's gonna trouble the water. My faith in the Lord is fiery hot. Come on. God's gonna trouble the water. Oh, we're singing way, way in the water. Way in the water. We're singing way, way in the water. Oh, 
God's going to try. Let's take it down now. Here we go. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm sometimes up and I'm sometimes down. That's right, brother. God's going to try. But still my soul is heavenly bound. God's going to trouble the water. See, I told you once, don't make me tell you twice. Cora. God's going to trouble the water. I won't bow to nobody but my Jesus Christ. God's going to trouble oh, the water. Yeah, we're singing way. Come on, yeah. we're singing way, way in the water, way in the water, children, way in the water. Whoa, God's gonna trouble. God's gonna trouble the water. Whoa, God's gonna trouble the water. Don't you know that God's gonna trouble? You don't have to feel no shame now, cause God's gonna trouble the water. He's gonna give you a new name. God's gonna trouble the water. Don't you know that God's gonna trouble the water? Amen. You are dismissed with fellowship. Yeah.